We're here at the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference 2014 in Busan in the Republic of Korea and I'm very pleased to be joined by Dr. Bashir Gwandu who is Chairman of the Commonwealth ITU Group. Dr. Gwandu, thank you very much for being with us today. Th thank you very much. Good morning to you and thank you very much for the invitation. It's thank very you. nice to see you in the studio. Nice to see you once again. Uh, I'd like to start off by talking about the Commonwealth ITU Group. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about that um, and as Chairman of it, what are the key takeaways uh, for you so far from the Plenipotentiary Conference? Thank you. Now, uh, the Commonwealth ITU group is a, uh, is a group of uh, 54 member uh, Commonwealth countries. You know, Commonwealth countries are not the, those in the Russian side, but the English Commonwealth, that is 54 member countries. Uh, it was set up in 2002 to kind of provide coordination when it comes to ITU activities. Uh, hitherto, there was no such arrangement. Uh, we, had other, we have many other Commonwealth bodies, but none focus on getting Commonwealth countries to coordinate between themselves, come up with uh, positions that they can promote at their own positions towards any of the ITU conferences. Now, there are key advantages in doing that. I mean, we, we identified that the Commonwealth countries are unique in the arrangement in that we are present in four regions of the ITU. Uh, we have countries in two countries in Europe, we have 18 countries in Africa, we have the Pacific, we have uh, obviously South America. So all of these countries put together from the, uh, the, from the Commonwealth can actually promote any decision taken at the CIG to each of those regional organizations. So they provide a kind of platform to, if you like, harmonize decisions easier when it comes to ITU conferences. So we have that unique position and uh, the Commonwealth ITU group kind of provide that ability, like, I mean, it's similar to what you know as Africa Telecommunion that coordinate 54 member African countries. It's only that the Commonwealth is in different regions. So it, it, it has that advantage of having to influence different regional organizations. And what have been the key takeaways for you so far from this plenary century conference? The key takeaway for me as uh, Chairman of Commonwealth is that uh, I am able to pick out, I mean, there, there have been 106 or so uh, uh, policy statements made by different ministers during the conference. And each of those policy statements carries some I mean, I mean, I mean, information about a specific country, what they have been doing. So it's, it's a sharing uh, kind of opportunity so that we can learn, okay, we can pick certain things that are done well in some countries and then share them uh, uh, to our members. So we can, if you like, kind of form a good practice, compodium of good practice, basically, in the area. ITU is celebrating its 150th anniversary uh, next year. What do you see as the key technological innovations of uh, today that, that has been associated with the work of ITU? Well, to be able to answer that question, I need to look at ITU looking at the sectors. I mean, for the radio sector, obviously, we have uh, I mean, satellite is a great innovation, radio, television, all these are great innovations that have changed lives. We look at broadband, uh, we look at big data, or rather Internet of Things. All these ride on spectrum or on broad mobile broadband. So these are key innovations with respect to radio sector. There's also, if you look at the standardization, we have different protocols that are put together to allow communication between different networks uh, and systems. That's another innovation that actually changed things. And so the internet, broadband internet in particular, the internet of things, the uh, I mean, I mean, smart cities that are coming through are all going to rely on the work of ITU. And the key, key work of ITU, of course, like I said, the spectrum that provides for broadband and satellite. All these are key things that have changed the way we look at things. From years, I mean, I feel like uh, 50 years or, or 60 years ago, people are relying on. I mean, the TV and radio. Now we have the internet. There's so many, um, and, and also the, the, the handset. We have smart handsets that now you can use. All this results f primarily from the work of ITU. So uh, I, I think, and these are things that have changed economies, changed social way in the way we do you know, we interact socially, and change in, in, in investment pattern. And in fact, education, health, management of transport, management of water, management of waste. All these. I actually take some benefit from the work of ITU on, in these areas I've just mentioned. And what about policy enhancement or, or change that ITU members should be looking at uh, currently and, and in the near future? Well, I think what uh, the policy areas that we should look at is, uh, if you like, uh, how do we use all the things I've mentioned to promote better management of societies? 
we're going to have obviously mega cities in some places like I mean Nigeria, where I came from originally. How do we manage our people? How do we manage? I mean, I mean energy. How do we manage waste? How much are all of these things are policy areas that are obviously going to, if you like, in the future, will be relevant? Uh, how do we promote broadband? Uh, uh, networks and, uh, and not only broadband networks but next generation networks the issues of 5g that is coming through how do we address that we're going to talking about imt 2020 how do we plan for that uh, i mean uh, how are we going to plan put ourselves in such a way that we can accommodate big data that we talked about i mean we can have to look at getting more spectrum available for all these services because obviously in some places uh, where you don't have infra I mean, I mean, grand infrastructure, we look and have to look at spectrum as what we should use for the last mile. We're going to have to look at, I mean, investment in the infrastructure, policy that promote investment in infrastructure to, to if you like, uh, one provide, for example, fiber, fiber, which was one of the technology I should have mentioned earlier. But fiber, I mean, if we get fiber across Angola, then we also have spectrum made available to cater for all these services that are going to have, if you like, accommodate Internet of Things. And Internet of Things, we're talking about millions and other billions of devices interacting together. We're going to have to start our policy in such a way that it's going to uh, cater for this, it's going to prepare our societies towards all of these uh, new things that are coming through. So the, so the policy is really, one, access, two, um, providing infrastructure, three, network, four, broadband. I mean, five, uh, I mean, we can have, uh, 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 if you like, I mean, I mean management of critical infrastructure. All of these things are key. And of course, management of the, um, the internet, making it, I mean, providing, I mean, if you like, environment for it to continue to grow in the way it's been growing over the last decade. The uh, CIG has recently been a very active participant in the ITU activities. Um, what are the potential benefits of uh, CIG to its member states? Uh, the benefit of I mean, I mean, CIG so far, I can, I can obviously think of many. I can mention a few. In the area of standardization, we have provided a lot of benefit to member states. I think we, uh, we, have, we are uniquely placed to bring benefits unlike other uh, uh, organs that are similar. Because one, for example, CIG w was key in the, in, in the portion of the large spectrum allocation, largest 700 megahertz allocation. In 2007, I was obviously in the CIG, and we did 800 megahertz allocation, which was also key. We also pursued a satellite uh, I mean spectrum, uh, uh, if you like, making it easier for 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 satellite uh, uh, coordination. CIG has provided, I mean, a key input into that. Uh, CIG has also worked on standardization aspect, the issue of environment, sustainable environment, the issue of even even I mean, I mean, in charger, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, if you like having similar ch I mean, charger, the issue of involvement of academia, all of this really came from CIG. So we are well placed to help uh, uh, member states to actually promote uh, a particular interest they have in, I mean, the, I mean in, when it comes to ITU. No other organization is well placed to do that as much as CIG. And we have been delivering on these areas and we'll continue to, 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 to work on this, to continue to bring people together to promote these kind of ideas. Very informative and comprehensive answers. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Th thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Much pleasure. Thank you.